Warm welcome to the PCR TV. This segment is on um, how to treat bifurcation lesions and when to use, uh, in particular, when to use a two stent strategy. With us today, we have um, Alide Kiefer from Milan and Goran Stankovic from Belgrade. Welcome. So, I'd like to start with um, you, Goran. So, in general, when is a two, an intended two stent strategy for non left main bifurcations indicated? Uh, we have relatively limited data. There are two randomized studies. One is Nordic 4, the other one is EBC2. Mm -hmm. And if we summarize, we can say like in 15%, maybe 20% maximum, we really need based on those studies to stand strategy up front. But however, up to two or three years of follow-up, we don't have clear benefit in any specific subset. So uh, when we designed the studies, our idea was to use diffuse, disease in the large side branches, bigger than 2.5, are probably indication for upfront in non-left main bifurcation. And of course, if you have very difficult access to the side branch, if it's tortuous, full of calcium, then it's better to stent it, and uh, that's another indication for two stent strategy. It's different in the left main, but Dr. Kefu will explain you the difference. Okay, and as a sub-question to that, um, if you're going to use a two stent strategy, should you use, in general, a main branch first strategy or a side branch first strategy? And are there any new data to guide us on that? Uh, data is also very limited in that field because most of our approaches are main vessel first. But then when a uh, large registry like COBIS was analyzing their own data in limited number of 1,700 patients, what they found is that the result is good if Technically, procedure is perfectionized by final kissing balloon inflation. So if you do either side branch first or main branch first, and if you do final kissing inflation, you have up to three years of follow-up, almost the same rate of maze. However, if you do side branch first and you don't finalize with kissing, then you have much worse outcome in relation to higher mortality, MI, or stent thrombosis rate. So you can do either, depends on uh, your personal preference and strategy that you find the best. Side branch first is like crush, decay crush. Mm -hmm. Main branch first is usually top these days. So we are speaking about comparison of decay crush versus TN protrusion. And in the setting of decay crush, you are already performing twice kissing balloon inflation. So by improvement and refinement in crush, you are limiting possibility for maze, at least at midterm follow-up. And this is why DK crush became so popular and classical crush is almost not used at all these days. Okay, thank you. So moving on to the next part of the, the discussion, um, is the left main different in terms of bifurcation treatment and how do you approach it? I mean, left main is different in the sense that you have uh, actually less data available. All the data that you have uh, are coming from large registries and the tendency from the registry is that uh, there is no difference between provisional and two-stent approach. Clearly there is a selection bias because most probably the really disease bifurcation lesion with more complex uh, disease, uh, more diseased uh, uh, and diffuse disease on the circumference, which is normally the side branches. I mean, unfavorable takeoff of the vessel, they are done with two stand by the operator. So registry can show you something, but at the end of the day, they don't give you the answer. So what we have planned with the European bifurcation group was to run for the first time a randomized clinical trial, focusing on left main bifurcation. So this is ABC main trial for 150 patients randomized to one stent strategy versus two stent strategy in left main bifurcation. And hopefully we will have the answer to the question in a randomized clinical fashion, which is what, what it should be. And when do we hope to see that trial completed? Yeah, the trial just started. So we just started the enrollment, so clearly it is one year result, so whenever we will complete the enrollment of 450 patients, then clearly we have to wait for another year to get the primary endpoint. And as a general question to both of you, um, 
adjunct, there's, there are many modalities for adjunctive imaging these days. When would you advise using adjunctive imaging in bifurcation stenting, particularly if you're using two, a two-stent strategy? Uh, we learned a lot from uh, imaging in the past. It was mostly IVUS. These days, OCT is much more used, but more used with uh, BVS because with BVS we still need to refine technique because of limitations of technology that is available today. OCT imaging is strongly recommended, we cannot say must, otherwise uh, we will put uh, people in the problem if they don't have OCT or if they know, don't know how to interpret small differences in images. So we, uh, we recommend for left main imaging guidance but I'm sure that uh, in, in randomized study we will have subset of patients with the imaging to clearly define. What we learned from meta-analysis is that IVUS guidance may even lower mortality, but it was never uh, documented in single randomized trial. So if we speak about non-left non main bifurcation lesions, we can use IVUS if we see complex anatomy, calcium, just to evaluate real diameters, expansion, lesion preparation, and in left main, it's strongly recommended. And have you got any, anything else to add to that? For bifurcation with our non-left main, my current practice is to limit this when it's a two-stent technique. So complex anatomy, where you're going to plan two stent. And honestly, I do when I was guidance in order to be comfortable with the final result. On left main bifurcation, again, if it's a provisional left main, honestly, I don't do a final IVUS, but when there is a left main bifurcation where I'm going to end it with two stent strategy, usually I do IVUS, and this is the signal given by main compare, the signal given by the tronco IVUS study by the Spanish group that where you have a complex uh, two stent strategy, there is an advantage in mortality doing IVUS guided left main PCI. Well, thank you very much. To wrap up, um, the um, key indications for doing a two-stent strategy in non-left main are basically when you have a significant side branch as evidenced by large diameter supplying a large territory or if, when there's going to be difficult access to the side branch. Um, left main is a, an area that is ripe for research with the, the EBC main study, um, but we don't actually have any hard randomized data yet as to how to proceed, whether to do provisional, whether to do a two-stent strategy. And for both cases, non-left main and left main, it seems that adjunctive imaging is not, not mandatory, but recommended when you have complex uh, anatomy or complex techniques being used in the non-left main bifurcations, but it's highly recommended in the left main setting. Well, thank you very much. I think that, uh, that wraps up this very interesting uh, summary segment on uh, bifurcation treatment. Mm -hmm.